a new generation for the most important Mercedes model, the most sold one, the Mercedes GLC. This mid-size SUV here in spectral blue. My favorite color, Thomas Blue, we call it here on Autogefühl with Thomas, of course. And here in the front, you can see this is the AMG line, sportier style. Panamericana grille, it is called, is wider in the lower part and in the upper part. And this sportier micro star pattern for the AMG line here, really cool looking. Not too different from the previous generation, more an evolution in the design, but they have upgraded technology. LED headlamps are standard, optional so-called digital light. This is like an extended high beam function where you can also have individual parts, then, you know, lighter or darker depending on what's coming ahead to you. Let's move on to the side profile. First of all, we can see 19 inch wheels here, but pretty thick tires. And here also in the rather aerodynamic AMG styling. And indeed aerodynamics is something they have improved. For example, look at that here. The side mirrors have moved a little bit lower. Usually they would be here and now they're more like coupe sports car attached. And this also to improve aerodynamics. 4 meters 72 or 186 inches in length means 6 centimeters or 2 inches longer than the previous generation. So a little bit longer just. And even more about aerodynamics, you can see here these side steps. They look yeah, pretty amazing, definitely. And they're not bad for aerodynamics. They actually also improve aerodynamics. Very interesting. They've upgraded suspension-wise. Front and rear axle are completely new, give more comfort actually. And optional, also testing today, you can also pick the air suspension. The plug-in hybrid has it as standard on the rear, but you can also go for a full air suspension and front and rear axle. We also have it here for you today. The side profile, typical GLC with this coupe-like style. Some nice shoulders. There will also again be a coupe version. This will be coming up later, so subscribe if you haven't done so far. And if you're a long-term subscriber, thank you even more. Wheel arches in the AMG line are painted in vehicle color. Otherwise, they would be contrasting in the normal lines. The AMG line, by the way, would also come with a sportier base suspension if you don't pick this optional air suspension. And even more technology, when we look at the rear axle, it's very, very interesting. 4.5 degrees, it can turn in the opposite direction when you have that rear axle steering. That is new with this new generation, has been introduced with a new C-Class. And indeed, in this segment, this sets both C-Class and GLC apart from the competition. And well, so far, maybe they'll do something about it. We'll see about that. And the thing is that the threshold weight changes from you know, steering in the opposite direction to being in a peril is about 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour. So at low speeds, it fakes a shorter wheelbase. It reduces the turning circle by about a meter or something. So indeed has a turning circle of a way smaller car than that is of course a big advantage then. It comes together in a technology pack with air suspension and the rear axle steering. That's how they combine it actually. Towards the rear here, typical tail lamps that are more horizontally drawn by the recent Mercedes design, GLC 300. This is the volume model, well together maybe also with the GLC 250. So in each, the two liter four cylinder petrol engine, soon more about the engines, but this is basically as it stands here now right now, maybe not with all the bells and whistles, but the most sold Mercedes at this moment. Formatic all-wheel drive. In the US, you will also get rear wheel drive. You get a rear wheel bias, even though you have all-wheel drive. In the lower part, Ah, these are typical fake exhausts and of course the autography fake exhaust police is there for you. Well, the real exhaust is underneath. Yeah, and the AMG line, they always want to do these sporty design elements. Also here then with the high gloss black and so on. Do you like it? Well, here on our channel, most don't like fake exhaust, but rather an honest design. But definitely from all the things we heard so far, hardware bias, technology changes. This is very promising for the driving part today. And turning indicators or hazard lights. Not that spectacular here in the rear. But looks a little bit fancier in the front, doesn't it? And the secondary vehicle here, diamond white for a color difference. Here also in the AMG line. And this one is also equipped with the night package. So you have more black accentuations. Also here in the side mirrors and also the frames around the windows. This vehicle is also equipped with 20 inch wheels. You can see here the larger wheels. They look really, really impressive. And of course, once again, the black contrast to the white exterior color. Do you like this one better or you rather prefer the blue one? we've shown to you. Or what about here, the graphite gray. So indeed it's not black. Black would be even darker. So a lighter than graphite gray here with 19 inch wheels. Once again, AMG line. 
you will have two lines basically here the AMG line we've shown to you today or then alternatively the avant-garde which is also then again already the base trim level this new car key is pretty cool here matte design and also quite heavy so that feels premium indeed and door closing sound not that good actually and also you have to really slam the door when you do it like this um, it's because the car is so well insulated i guess that it doesn't so you really have to slam it and then yeah doesn't have the best sound but it has good materials on the inside this is a high grade leather red called mb Tex in us artico in europe for example and really very well executed this new design i don't like that much because you cannot move these anymore they do control the seats but they don't give you this moving feedback you can also get leather seats with seat cooling then it would appear here it's an option 15 speakers sound system here Burmester. this is a very cool sound system indeed a lot of you know space here in the pockets and then the new cockpit layout this you know has changed massively indeed so you have new digital instruments you have a new infotainment system sumo deal so that this is the amg line steering wheel it handles better it looks cooler here with the two horizontal fins or spokes um however you have capacitive hashtag capacitive bs buttons here so not too well to control while driving now by the way at, at dark you can see here ambient lighting at the inside of the air vents that looks pretty amazing and they just changed the color as well when standing still here it does actually so pretty cool and the seats they are also new and for example, in Germany or Europe, you can also get microfiber or fabric in the US. And also in Europe, you can get these here, the full article seats. So this is all the high-grade leather red, super soft indeed. And as I said, also available with cooling. So very nicely executed. You can see already the perforation that is basically then ready for that cooling option. As for the seat ergonomics, um, shoot up. I feel that Mercedes at this moment for the new vehicles are not best as for seat ergonomics. And especially, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the bigger vehicles and the electric vehicles lack in that. Here it's actually quite okay. I would still say that some of the competitors, for example, the, you know, like the Volvo XC60, for example, or the BMW X3 have some better base seat ergonomics. However, the material, the soft leatherette, that feels actually quite nice and, um, you know, adapts also well to the body. So it's not bad or something, but they could also improve the ergonomics a little bit more, I think. With 189 or 6 for 2, you still have some headroom left. Although this is the one here also with the panoramic roof. You can have this shade. Very important when it's really hot that you still have the shade. And this is also a panoramic roof you can indeed still open. Um, yeah, with these sliders here, also not too good to control it while driving. I really prefer the rear knobs uh, in there. However, this unit looks pretty cool. And once again, with the ambient light. So design-wise, with ambient lighting integration, that's where they really score it always. And the steering wheel up and down and out. Electric away here. So this is also easy to adjust. Yeah, you're right. I didn't show it. <laughs> there we are. Now, finally, ooh, opening the panoramic roof. And it's really quite large indeed. Um, please, right? Let's keep it, yeah. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Whoa, that looks impressive, doesn't it? And especially here, this mad wood area, that is cool. However, here the catch is that we have the great mad wood here. You cannot go for another option with the high gloss black and this high gloss black area is not that cool. But there are other combinations where you cannot have this one here. Yeah, yeah. so you have to look in the configurator in your market. This is then here the 11.9 inch screen vertical way on the other side 12.3 inch digital instruments once again the sporty AMG style steering wheel the other one would have one spoke here shifting pedals so overall design was really cool also with the air vents they have nice clicking sound here for example and yeah I'm not sure if you can always see it on camera here with the mid light integration so that looks really amazing but what about the functionality well, to control the digital instruments, you can here have the capacitive buttons. To do that while driving is really not that ideal. And then you can also, for example, switch to view, have a GPS view uh, in there. But the thing is, uh, that works indeed for the car internal GPS. But when we, for example, go for, you know, like Apple Maps, uh, I don't know, search a fuel station, um, you see that I put a route here. And the only thing that happens here is this. So um, BMW, for example, now offers that when you have 
CarPlay and Apple Maps on the right side that you also have it on the left side. And when you have Android Auto and Google Maps, it's also then here on the left side, not possible here. But you can go for other stylings, for example, a sports styling here in the instruments. They look pretty cool though. This is the MBOX infotainment system. You can see directly the map here. Also the car internal GPS map has the satellite view if you like. It's actually decently fast enough when you have the climate unit here on. It is always in that area. It stays in that area, two zone AC. It's hard to do that while driving because you have no physical button, but at least it stays in this area. This is also always the home menu. And you have, for example, also some off-road settings. Soon going to show you the special off-road um, see-through view camera, by the way. That's a very interesting thing. And let's take a look at the rear view camera when we turn on the vehicle. That's like this. Great resolution. So this is the basic rear view and also front view camera. And the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration looks like this. This here, the um, Apple CarPlay. Here we go. So I think the system is, you know, good in a way it responses, it has a good response to the things you do with the vehicle. It could be a little bit faster maybe. It's not the, you know, most obvious one. Sometimes the layers are a little bit too complicated deep in the menu. But overall, I think so far we can be quite satisfied. In here, there's the transparent bonnet feature. So this is not a live feed. It's calculated by the image around, and this is the live image. And then I've put this rock right there. When I go forward, then you can see the image is being built up, and this is then not a live image, but it's a past image. But you can see here, the sense behind it is that I see where is the rock underneath the vehicle, and it's exactly in this position, even though it's calculated. And uh, <laughs> that's anything on. And the th see it here, then it's gone, you know, and then it builds up and I don't see it anymore. But the reason behind it is, once again, I can show you it with the rock here. There we go, once again, that when you go forward, you know where the rock is and that you don't drive over it or maybe it damages your wheels from the side and so on. And this really then prevents tire damage. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Open the sunroof. I'm opening the sunroof. Hey, well, that's a useful feature. And I don't have to use the, uh, the touch thing to open it. Well, so voice recognition does work. The good thing here with the Mercedes is it has some car features integrated, like, for example, sunroof and so on. Or maybe like a steering wheel heating you could also activate by that if you have one. And the Burmese sound system, wow, is really top-notch. Amazing. Ooh. The display is clear to read and also includes some GPS infos. You can also change these colors here individually yourself, but also when you control the climate unit here, warmer temperature or colder, then it changes color really amazing. And even cooler, it is a two zone AC. So that means when you, for, you can have like, you know, see, it is then split. The middle one stays neutral, the right one then for the passenger, the left one for the driver, depending on the temperature here. Yeah, I'm doing the temperature DJ here now. <laughs> Rear seating area from the build quality. It's really very nice again. You also at the inside of the door, soft touch with the red once again. And here with a very clean design also, you know, that looks quite cool. Just, you know, this high gloss piano like a thing. It looks cool when it's clean and without dust and without fingerprints and so on. The rear seating space here is you fit in with four, at least four tall adults. Um, here when the seat is a little bit higher, this recess fits better. But using that platform space, yeah, in a GLB, for example, you have even more like room when you want to save some money. Yeah. But this is more the premium approach here. Headroom, no problem. And in the middle seat, it works. Yeah, so it works with five tall adults. And once again here, this new soft touch leatherette has also good seating comfort here for the rear. So it's very cozy here in the rear. Yeah, could be a little bit more leg room for tall people, but it's still okay. The middle part here, there's um, cup holders. This is like the um, you know, smartphone holder, like this and for adaptive cup holders. And two times isofix here. And well, the door there, when Michelle is standing there, it doesn't open 90 degrees, but you know, wide enough that you can install these child seats. The boot volume is larger now. Now at 600 liters and yeah, it's a very good storage area here. 
can see easily a meter of 40 inches in width. We can store a lot of things here and let's get rid of some. You can see here that plug-in hybrid would have a small step in here indeed. This one here, the pure petrol engine, still has a lot of space underneath. That's cool. Or maybe also a replacement tire. Then here the length is about 95 centimeters or 37 inches and the total height is here at 75 centimeters or 29 inches. As for folding the seats, it's a very good mechanism here and here and this is how it's supposed to be really easily done. Then you can have this one here as an SUV, of course use it like an estate, 175 in centimeters or 69 inches. I always measured it here because this is in the shortest way, but overall very satisfied with the loading area. Under the hood, it's all about two liter four cylinder engines, petrol and diesel and plug-in hybrids, both for petrol and diesel in around one kilometers or 60 miles of pure electric range. However, this one here today, this is the main engine, a two liter four cylinder petrol engine in the GLC 300. It makes 258 horsepower and 6.2 seconds is the acceleration figure. All wheel drive, as I said, has a rear wheel bias then. And for some markets, there will also be rear-wheel drive only versions. What's also interesting is that I forgot what I want to say now. Now remember, <laughs> there's one exception to the four-cylinder setup. There will be a six-cylinder diesel at a later stage. And towing is 2.4 to maximum 2.5 tons. The all-wheel drive distribution, by the way, is fixed. It's a permanent all-wheel drive when you have that AVWD and 45% in the front, 55% in the rear. Welcome, new GLC, sports mode acceleration, let's go. So that was zero to 90 kilometers an hour, so almost to one kilometer or 60 miles. 90 is here the speed limit. And the acceleration figure is, yeah, just around six seconds. So that's pretty decent here with the GLC 300 is also, I would say, the recommended engine. The little bit less horsepower spec is also fine. Um, this here, the two liter four cylinder, and in the US, you can get it with rear wheel drive, petrol engine here, and otherwise in Europe with all wheel drive. Still a rear wheel bias then in the sports mode. Everything is set on a sportier node with more throttle input, for example. Steering, let's see how that changes. It's quite natural, feels good to control. Comfort mode, steering gets lighter. Here, also the air suspension is put in optionally and that gives it a soft, nice ride. However, when we are in the sport mode then once again, then it gives a little bit more feedback. And indeed, Mercedes is usually in the base versions that they more set tone on comfort than sportiness, but here in the new generation, the car feels definitely sportier than before. Here we have these very, very nice roads outside of Barcelona, like an hour north. So, like, you know, direction of the Pyrenees, really, really nice. And yeah, it feels, you know, very good as for the whole driving feeling, as for the sporty handling. So this definitely an improvement to the previous generation. Talked about it in the interior as for the user interface, also while driving with the new screen, climate controls, capacitive BS buttons at the steering wheel. This is to me, whoa, that's dirty here on the road. Very dirty. <laughs> so I like the user interface better with the previous generation, but driving wise, yeah, this is really cool. And it still feels to me that this is, said it in the uh, initial part also, in the initial review, but this is more an evolution of the vehicle and this is to me not a bad thing you know because this kind of feels that they had something to work with and could improve that so everything that is hardware wise really feels very nice and very balanced indeed yeah switching the driving modes either you can pick here and then click it there or you can click that directly through here um, but most of the time you would need to watch that screen. So it's also not ideal, but you can also more or less keep it in comfort mode. That's also fine because when you pin it down with the foot, then you also have access to, to all that power. And again, I feel the steering setup is really nice and natural. You can also pick something in between, for example, like you say you want the comfortable suspension, but 
you want the you know better feedback from the steering wheel then you can go to this individual driving mode and then set it up here also takes a while but to do that while driving is once again a little bit complicated better do that when it's standing still and here for example then go to steering and put the steering to sport now i have a comfortable suspension but i have a little bit more feedback in the steering wheel and that's to me for example a likable choice the car feels sporty at the same time it can feel calm especially when you switch back into the comfort mode so from the whole oh there's the police wasn't me well, I looked a little bit suspicious I was using his walkie-talkie then the radio were we too fast I don't think so right do, do, you, do you also have that? Even when you didn't do anything wrong and the police at the side of the road, you're like, shh, oh, did I sort of say, <laughs> sorry, did I, did I something wrong? You know, yeah, that's maybe, I don't know, guilty conscience. Of course, I never exceed the speed limits. Never. <laughs> so back to the vehicle. Here, countryside road, I can always set the cruise control. And this car more or less drives itself now. Soon we also hop to the motorway. The head-up display is really very crisp. I have it very well in my line of sight and large. I also have the GPS running from the car here at the moment. So I have a good, like a small map overview inside there, there too. What I really like are some emotional elements also while driving, like the air vents, which have me, you know, the, the, the ambient lighting inside. It was raining pretty heavily earlier. And then you could also see when it was darker that this, you know, it's illuminated and I know that's, that's really very, very cool. And the seats to be very um, precise, um, the ergonomics would be better, but the surface is really comfortable. That's, you know, to be, to be very precise about the seats. As for the instruments, I can very well read them. This is not a huge change, uh, you know, like bigger change from the previous generation is really more the screen here in the middle. I do prefer it if you compare it to the hyperscreen in the EQS or EQE or something there. This is here, you know, from C-Class, S-Class, in the new gener generations, more or less you get used to it. But it's not the fastest way to interact with the car while driving, definitely. Um, as for roundabout visibility, you feel that this hasn't changed much. So it still feels classic like GLC and if you now compare internally from Mercedes the other SUVs like GLA, GLB this one here feels a little bit more sophisticated you get the air suspension as an option it feels indeed more like an upmarket vehicle whereas when you switch to the bigger GLE the GLE offers to me more comfort especially seating ergonomics wise and the whole like the whole size of the car just brings more calmness to the drive this one here would be your pick if inside the Mercedes SUV portfolio you want the one that feels most upmarket but at the same time is the sportiest. That would be the combination you would be looking for. Of course, the price is really hefty always for the GLC. And yeah, if I directly compare again the previous generation to this new one in the driving, I think. They really improved, it feels even better. It's sportier and more comfortable at the same time. So great hardware engineering work. It's just that user interface and software wise. Yeah, this can do more, but it has also become more complicated. That's a little bit the catch they have here, I think. And now to some motorway driving today here in Spain. And first thing that comes to your mind is, it is super silent in here, so moment one kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour now we have to slow down just a little bit but very relaxing and silent and that does fit to the air suspension setup here the optional air suspension we have really a nice soft ride dampening everything out not too soft though it's really really nicely tuned and you really get the calm relaxing feeling then fitting also these very soft leatherette seats Artico or Ambitex, however they're called in your market, they're really soft and comfortable. That's really pleasing. And for hotter temperatures like today, you can also get a seat ventilation. You just have to opt for this option. In Germany, by the way, we uh, say Sonderausstattung for the extras. 
Listen and repeat. Sonderausstattung. <lacht> like special equipment or like that's how extras are called like direct translation. Oh, there's Spanish police coming up. And by that way, we can also test the assistance systems here. Adaptive cruise control, so we want to keep the speed. Now they're coming to the camera. Hello, police. Hola, Spanish police. Policia. <laughs> And we can also increase it here. Doing that with the hashtag capacitive BS buttons is not the most pleasing thing to do, actually. So that is a little bit irritating. If you slide for individual steps and press for bigger steps, for 10 kilometer steps, then in this case, not very intuitive to do then to do it while driving when you don't have this haptic feedback from, from a rear button. However, lane is being kept also in a smooth way. Look at here, the transition between these two motorways, very nicely done. So as for assistance systems and also the noise installation, definitely an upgrade if you compare it to the previous generation. However, what is an inherent problem with the GLC and also with the new C-Class, especially when you compare it here to the previous generation, you feel a little bit caged in here. So it doesn't let you move freely. Other SUVs in this segment have more a driving position and the cockpit to let you breathe. This one here is rather set on, hey, it's a very sporty layout and we have this sports car caged in cockpit just is built around you and that might feel sporty and cool in one way but on the other hand it also limits the space you feel here and a traveling feeling doesn't come up by that case you know traveling feeling by the good noise insulation and the nice seating comfort and the nice seat material and so on and the good system systems yes but not with the limited space we have here around especially here for my for my legs, for, for, for the knees and so on. So this is something I would like to see improved here, by the way, in the, the red triangle, also the blind spot monitor. And if you hit the turning indicator while that is active, you also get an acoustic warning as an additional warning then. So this is also a very good feature. You should always, you should always get that blind spot monitor is really, to me, one of the most essential features actually. But overall, because the Oh, we're caged in here a little bit. It might not be a thing for people that are a little bit less tall than me or something. So not most ideal for tall people, although headroom-wise it's definitely okay. Um, yeah, it's still still overall a good result. And talking about good results, also for the fuel economy, so this two-liter four-cylinder with mild hybrid technology, increased efficiency, and you can actually, when you have more like cruise control, one kilometer, 60 miles an hour, so best ideal conditions. You can score some 7, 7.5 liters on one kilometer, so some 30 mbg plus US, and even towards 40 mbg UK. This is like the, the best consumption possible, you know, when you have really everything set in a very you know, rather lower speed and always steady speed and so on. This is very interesting. Of course, when it's a little bit more agile, then it gets worse, but fuel economy definitely also step up from the previous generation. Of course, there are also very interesting competitors in this very segment, like the BMW X3 recently facelifted, and what about the Genesis GV70?